I have with me Mr. Rajiv Kapoor, the managing director of Broadcom. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Sapna. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Kapoor, it seems like it's all good happening here. We are fourth in the globe as far as telecom is concerned, second internet penetration and second also with regards to smartphone. So do you think this is really the golden age of India? You know, it, it is exciting times, to be honest. You know, India is still an emerging country. GDP growth is good. The billion plus people are starting to be more demanding and consuming. So I think, I mean, we come from the electronics sector, right? So it's definitely exciting times in India where on one side you have infrastructure, government, e-governance, whatever, a lot being driven, which is demanding a lot of electronics to be, you know, that's, that's the angle of question I'm assuming you're asking. And then you have the consumer who, for varying reasons, the richest man wants, you know, a better lifestyle. The middle class are looking for high value, good services to their own life. And the uh, lower class, whether it be remote India or uh, low poverty segment, is still looking for solutions. They don't know they need electronics, but electronics is an enabler of that. So, what is the future of video technology in India and globally? And do you think this would be an enabler for digital India? See, live video watching and television fits in that segment of high uh, demand, right? is actually an anti-recession, it's, it's uh, agnostic to recession. TV watching is a very important part of a family's uh, pastime. And in a country like India, even more so because, you know, we just enjoy entertainment, we enjoy cricket, we enjoy social. You know, so TV is really important to us. Um, and we are not blessed with broadbands or PCs or, you know, other screens in the home. So we're not as distracted, right? So, in my view, the television plays a very important role in going beyond what we're used to as just live television. We're, of course, in early days of that, so the starting point is better quality television. So digitization just takes us in that era, right? And it's going to happen, you know, this is just a matter of time, it's going to be a digital era in India. That's a starting point of higher quality experiences, whether it be services, uh, just the experiences that a set-top box brings, versus, you know, just uh, you keep flipping channels, you don't have an EPG, you're just finding the channel. And I think that goes into multi-screen, multi-device, watch what you want, where you want, do gaming, do education, do uh, services on the set-top box, eventually for the television screen. We are not far away from the technology side of devices talking to each other. Simple example, you walk into the home, you got a phone in your hand, you just shot a video of your grandchildren in the park. You want to share it with the family, you're so excited, right? You just show it on the larger screen because that's a better experience. These are not high cost uh, topics because the TVs are being bought and the phones are being bought. Now it's a matter of services to connect them all. So I think there's you know, a lot to be expected and uh, looked forward to in the digital era and we're pretty excited about that. All right. If you could tell us um, about Broadcom's existing projects and how do you think Broadcom as an entity would be able to uh, go ahead and catalyze the Digital India project? Okay, so we're a very diverse company, so it gets very hard to give you a very crisp answer here. But let me just try and give you a few samplings of uh, how we play into this whole segment. So we, we have a very large investment in the video side. And we go from the small, medium, large, you know, the whole diverse segment of basic TV, even in the smallest of television set-top boxes, we are looking to bring high-value experiences to the subscriber. A Broadcom set-based set-top box really improves the TV watching experience, even at the lowest cost version, right? And then small, medium, large, there's on one side 4K technologies because TVs are selling. On the other side, you've got the low end, you know, just watch TV kind of uh, devices. Then we are very invested in broadband technologies of all types. So we are the only company that comes and says, listen, we're neutral to the choice of technology, wired or wireless, amongst wired, EPON, GPON, ADSL, VDSL, cable modems, EOC. We are number one in the world in all of the above. So we come into the table and say, let's help India architect solutions which actually genuinely solve the unique challenges of India. And I'll give you a few simple examples of unique challenges. Last mile is always a challenge. 
there is access rights. You can't just lay down another cable. So how do you think the last mile can be reached? So I'll get to that. There are electricity, power, diesel generator related challenges if you understand the space I'm touching, right? Now just using those two simple examples. You need to be able to mix and match different ways of delivering broadband to actually give the eventual service to the home. It's not about giving broadband to the home, it's about giving service. How the service reaches could be a mix and match of technologies. I'll give you one innovation we've done for India. Because the fiber in the basement or the curbside does not have a predictable power supply, we actually have invented a way of powering that from any one home that is on. So as long as there's one subscriber in, let's say, the apartment building, awake and alive, right? Let's say has a generator or UPS or has some source of electricity. That is enough to power the entire equipment in the basement. So you don't have to worry about a plug point. No security, no diesel generator, no. You see, you know, it's solving those kind of problems. So there are technology solutions to actually overcome what are challenges of laying down cables or you want to reuse any cable available. You want to reuse the infrastructure as it's available and not force more infrastructure. So, you know, that's where we come in. Right. So how do you think um, the scenario is right now with the delay of the National Fiber Optic project being delayed? You know, I don't want to comment about schedules, but uh, we're still very optimistic that um, because we see the progress, right? So the strategy around the NOFN uh, architecture was very, very important to the country from a progress perspective. And there is testimony in that with the previous government and the new government actually in agreement. So you had an old project being taken over by a new hands and saying, hey, this one is strategic to the country's future. So there is very clear, it is important to the future of the country. And that has been true in every other country also. You know, it's a very strategic initiative. We personally see progress. I think we have to be patient, you know. While there's progress, I think there are also unsolved problems. We have to, as a nation, be a little patient out here. We have to give it time to, like for example, the fiber reaches the Gram Panchayat. What goes beyond that, right? How is it monetized? How is it managed? Who is the, gives the right of way? Lots of unanswered questions and they will be answered. This is where the natural uh, uh, powers of market forces start coming in where people with good ideas go to the government and propose ideas and then it settles on a method that actually will work out. I am very optimistic, I am also very patient. I think that's an important virtue for India but it is going to go ahead in the right direction. Alright, well uh, the, it seems like the government is also giving a lot of emphasis to public-private partnerships. So mm -hmm. what would be the role of Broadcom in it? Uh, taking into consideration is just the right time we have Mr the president coming here and the Broadcom, the parent company being from America. So how do you relate to all of this happening so at this time? So PPP, I think, uh, I'm a believer that uh, PPP is a good model because not everything can be done by a government sector. You want to take advantage of the private sector, but you don't want to leave them alone either. So PPP is, is actually a decent model to have. Um, Broadcom in particular, since that's your question, uh, we being under the hood, our focus will remain invent for India. Invent maybe in India for India, if that's what it turns out to be. But invent solutions for emerging countries. Maybe India is a starting point of implementation, but it goes to five other countries. Or it goes to five other countries and then comes to India. Like we've seen examples of implemented for China, but applicable to India. I've seen examples of implemented for India, but applicable to 12 more countries. So we'll remain innovators of technology solutions which are perfect fit solving unsolved problems. The biggest space I'm excited about is what's called IoT or wearables. I think it is a unique opportunity for a made in India, made for India to happen. And that's where we're very heavily invested in simplifying technology, supporting even the students in colleges, getting ideas out in a very simple way. People can just download the kit off the web order a little hardware piece from our local distributor and we're talking about six dollars eight dollar kind of prices okay so the very very affordable kits simplified so people can implement apps solving unique problems in India and we really have unique problems like every other country so only we sitting in India understand the problems. so let's go solve them
All right. So how do you think these two Indias, the problems can be solved? Because here, for one part of India, it is uh, MBPS an issue, and in, on the other part, internet has yet not reached. So how do you think Broadcom being um, synonymous with uh, semiconductors, what's the role you would be playing there? I think getting internet everywhere is strategic to the nation's future. It has a direct relationship with GDP growth of the future, and the government recognizes that. We are going to continue to invest and support. And because we're a chip company, we're one layer removed from the deployment side because chips go into systems, systems go into eventually networks, right? We work with the network providers, we work with the government, we work with standards bodies, we work with industry bodies, we work with the media to make sure people understand what can and can't be done with technology. This is a burden we have just by being leaders in the industry, right? I mean, if we don't spend time and help people on one side understand what can be done, on the other side, us understand what the problems are so that we can marry technology and solutions together, right? We will continue to do that. We will continue to find the right ecosystem partners and channels like I've named to actually educate people about the paths forward. At the end of the day, you know, we are not, no single company is going to solve all the problems. I think with partnerships and, you know, a whole industry momentum going forward, I think there will be progress and industry plays a role in that. Great. Just one last query here. With regards to the political scenario, how was the last government's effort till now and your expectation from the Delhi elections? We are actually very excited about the way there's a high focus on getting electronics and infrastructure and a telecom highway in place for India. What's interesting is this is consistent across the previous government and the new government. So there is a very commonly acknowledged uh, initiative like NOFN uh, as a large project for the government that has cut across the political barriers, right? It's one of those large strategic initiatives everyone agrees to. So we're very bullish that, you know, uh, the country will see forward progress irrespective of the hands that are driving it. And, you know, it's, it's just happening. It, uh, it started five years ago and we see momentum on all this.